going. So I, I said, I told, I told her, you know, send me a WhatsApp message and then inshallah we'll give you the address. She must have, um, and I got into my, I put on my dawa hat. I put on my dawa hat, well, like this, right? And so I asked her, sister, you know, can, if, I, if you don't mind me asking, do you believe in God? And she said, yeah. I was like, okay, do you? They want to know about Islam? We'll give them that one. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma abad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to Dawa Diaries, episode number two. So today I want to talk about a story, and it's again, it's a sister again. And it's basically a Filipino sister this time. And again, she's from Hong Kong. So this sister contacted MCHK on the social media platform, Facebook. And she said, I want to know more about Islam. And she actually said, I want to get a copy of the Quran. I was like, okay, yeah, we have a copy of the Quran. And she said, what language do you have? I said, English, Tagalog, whatever you want. Because again, she's Filipino. So I thought, okay, you know, if you want Tagalog, you can give that. She said, oh, how much it is? I was like, it's free. She said, wow, free for us? I was like, yeah. And she was amazed. And this again, one point of there, you know, it made her feel like, you know, wow, that Islam or a Muslim was giving free stuff. So when you give free stuff, brothers and sisters, that can actually be a sign of da'wah as well, right? So I said, yeah, you can get it for free. Come to the MCHK Center, you can get it for free or anything else you want, you can take it for free. Another pointer there is that, you know, make sure in your center or in your city or whatever that might be, you have Quran copy to give for free, of course, right? In Hong Kong, Alhamdulillah, with MCHK, we try our best to have English and Chinese Quran copies available readily. We have the Galuk as well, and we're trying more, inshallah. All right, next, keep on going. So I, I said, I told, I told her, you know, send me a WhatsApp message and then inshallah, we'll give you the address. She must have, um, and I got into my, I put on my dawah hat. I put on my dawah hat, well, like this, right? And so I asked her, the sister, you know, can, if, I, if you don't mind me asking, do you believe in God? And she said, yeah. I was like, okay, do you have any, any faith? And she said, yeah, I'm a Christian. I was like, okay. Um, I was like, okay, do you believe God is one? She said, yeah, definitely. I was like, okay, good. Do you believe God can die, can be born? She's like, no, definitely not. I was like, okay. Because again, you know, the Christian theology tells us that, right? I said, okay. So what is your idea about Jesus? Straight into the topic, straight into the topic, right? You know, when you're doing that one and you're speaking to different people, you need to grab on a different file, right? On a computer. Imagine your, your, your mind is a computer, which it is, right? You need to select a different file depending on who you're speaking with. So in the beginning of the conversation, as you saw, what did I do? I asked them one question, which is, do you believe in God, right? Now, once I hear a yes or a no, I know which file I'm going to select, inshallah, right? So once she, once she said yes, I said, right, okay, now, Tell me what you what religion do you follow? Okay, Christianity. Okay, next file, sub file, sub file, sub file, right? So anyway, so I said, right. Um, what's your idea about Jesus? You know, what do you think about Jesus? And can you guess what she said? She said, Jesus is a prophet. I said, huh? Are you sure you're a Christian? She said, yeah, I'm a Christian. I said, but you just said Jesus is a prophet. She's like, yeah, basically, um, I thought she was, I thought he was God or he was son of God, but then something happened. She said, I started reading the Bible. I was like, okay, that should make you more convinced to be that, you know, you're Christian. And she actually said, no. She said, as I started reading the Bible, as I started trying to find out where did Jesus say that worship me, that I am God, I am your savior, like all of those things that we are told, she said, I could not find anything. And of course you can't find anything, right? And that's what we tell our Christian brothers and sisters, right? That there is no statement in the Bible which Jesus himself has said, I am God, worship me, right? And then, so that's the first thing. She said she read the Bible, she could not find anything. Number two, I said, okay, so is there anything else that made you feel, you know what? This is, something is not right here. She said, yes. She said there was a poster she saw on one of the social media pages out of Facebook or something like that. And she said it said, it was a poster It said, keep calm and know Jesus is a prophet of Allah. I was like, okay. So she said when, I, when she read that, it gave her a trigger, right? You know, sometimes, and now again, I'm going to go on a tangent again. Sometimes you may not think 
the seeds you are planting. You know, all of these posters that people are making, Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless them. Um, all of these social media da'wah that we do, right? You might not think the effect it may have either today, tomorrow, next week, what next month, next year, whatever that might be. Because the, the, the photo, that video, the article, you know, is there on the internet, inshallah, that website, whatever that might be. And people may benefit from that even when you are in your grave. Right? So this is the, hopefully an, an encouragement for people who are not doing da'wah even on social media. Right? The sister said, this sister said, she said, I found this post on Facebook. She said, I don't know who made it, but it said, keep calm and believe Jesus is a prophet of Allah. And then it gave, it, she said, it gave three verses from the Bible where Jesus himself says, I myself cannot do anything except by the will of the Father, where Jesus said, you know, the Father is greater than I. And other similar verses where we know from the Bible itself that Jesus never claimed divinity. I said, okay, good. So Alhamdulillah, you know, you found a, a, a means of finding the truth. And that's what she said. She's like, yeah, all I wanted to know was the truth. I said, okay, so you believe God is one? She said, yeah. I said, you believe God cannot be born? She said, yeah. You believe God cannot have children? She said, yeah. You believe Jesus is a prophet of God? She said, yeah. He, he was like a teacher. I was like, good. I was like, okay, so what about Muhammad? Peace be upon him. She's like, yeah, I think he's definitely a prophet as well. Because at the end of the day, he was basically saying what Jesus was saying, what Moses was saying. And I was like, exactly. So I was like, then what is stopping you to become a Muslim? Same question, right? Same question as I said in the first episode as well. She said, I don't know, right? And I said, well, you know, what if I help you to become a Muslim? She's like, how do I become like that? I was like, you just need to say one statement. And that's it. Once you say that statement, it's called a Shahada. Once you say that statement, you enter the fold of Islam, right? And once you enter Islam, then of course you can develop and you can learn and you can continue to progress as a Muslim. And this is on WhatsApp, of course, and she started getting a bit emotional. She's like, really, I can do that? I was like, of course. So I said, look, give me a call and inshallah we'll do this, right? She couldn't do it on that, on that same day. She was uh, basically her employer was a Catholic. So she said, I don't want to do it in front of her. I said, okay, no problem. You know, give us a call when you're able to do so. So the next day she called us and, uh, you know, spoke to her on the phone. I went through all the six articles of faith. And this is very important as well. When you're trying to give someone, you know, trying to help someone to become a Muslim, one of the main thing you need to do is go through the six articles of faith, right? Because that's the articles of faith. You know, going through the five pillars of Islam, it's not necessary right now. The most important thing is go through the six articles of faith, right? So you ask them about God, you believe in that, all of that attributes, whatnot. Um, yes, 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 good. You go to the prophets, good. Go to the scriptures, good. Go to the angels, good. Go to the day of judgment, good. Go to the predestiny, good. And then, of course, Alhamdulillah, you make them say the Shahada. Did the sister say the Shahada? Yes, she did. She said, Ashhadu la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadur Rasulullah. Subhanallah. Takbir Allahu Akbar. And what was her reaction after that? Again on the phone, she started crying. She started crying, right? And I could hear her, of course. And, you know, Alhamdulillah, those who are involved in that, you know, no matter how many times you help someone to become a Muslim, that reaction at that moment is priceless. Wallahi is priceless. And it, it, you know, for me personally, and I'm sure there's many people are like that, it makes you realize the ni'mah, the blessing of guidance. You know, people like myself, we were born to Muslim families and you know, we didn't really have to search for guidance, even though we do, we do definitely, you know, um, you could be born to a Muslim family and not follow the religion. There are many like them. May Allah protect us from that, especially our youth. May Allah protect them definitely from all the fitnas that are surrounding and the people leaving Islam, especially the youth, right? Because of different reasons, because of different reasons. But one of the biggest reasons, of course, is lack of knowledge. There's nothing, there could be factors, but the biggest one is lack of knowledge, right? And so, you know, she started crying and I said, how are you feeling, sister? And she said, I just feel thankful. I just feel thankful. I'm like, Alhamdulillah. And then, of course, I told her about, you know, and this is something that you can do, of course, is that. And, and it always gives them uh, extra, you know, good feeling. You give them the, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he said that, you know, every single person is born as a Muslim and it's the parents or whatnot that makes them a Christian, Jew or, or other religion. Um, and when that person comes back to Islam or reverts back to Islam, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all of the sins of the past, right? And then you tell them you're like a newborn baby. And that makes him even more emotional. That softens the heart even more. Not just that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy, out of his love, he converts the bad deeds into good deeds, right? Subhanallah. Um, so she was really inspired. And of course, I was inspired. And then of course, and this is, so that's done. Now we go to the second stage, which is supporting the new Muslim as well. And this is again, brothers and sisters, an advice to everyone. You know, we shouldn't just realize, we shouldn't just think, you know what? The Islamic Center will help the new Muslim. The Masjid will help the new Muslim. Why not all of us? You know, all of us who are Muslims, of course, why not we take some responsibility to help the, non, the, to help the new Muslims, right? Because they need that brotherhood. They need that sisterhood. It's not just about Ashhadu la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and then Takbir, Allahu Akbar, hug, 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 welcome to Islam, Alhamdulillah. Right? That's not <laughs> taking care of the new Muslims, you know. Um, so anyway, for, for the sister, I told her, look, sister, you can come to the center, the MCHK center, collect some free information from us. I'll share some video with you, useful information about how to pray, um, some booklets about how to pray, and also the website, which is called New Muslim Guide, a very good website. And it gives you about different categories, you know, about the clothing of the Muslim, the food of the Muslim, the, the, the manners of the Muslim. So different things I said you, you can learn from step by step by step. The other thing that we do also is I put, I, you know, I make her connect to sisters, of course. If it was a sister, connect to sisters. If it was a brother, myself or anybody else can obviously to share the brotherhood um, and also to add them to WhatsApp group. Where, so we have two, well, I have two WhatsApp group. One is about knowing Islam. Um, so that's anybody and we, we put reminders there. And then there's another WhatsApp group, which is called a community WhatsApp group, where, you know, we have a brother's group and we have a sister's group. And again, you know, the brothers and sisters in their own group, they can share things, they can ask questions, they can, you know, just to feel there's a brotherhood and sister, a virtual brother and sisterhood, right? Alhamdulillah. Um, but again, she appreciated that. And uh, Alhamdulillah, of course, she came the next day. She got the, the, the certificate from us as well, which she was surprised by. You know, we give certificates of Shahada as well. And the reason we give that is because mainly of two reasons. Number one, you know, if she was to pass away, when she was to pass away, you know, we can show that, you know, she was a Muslim. Number two, when she goes on Hajj, um, again, she can prove she's a Muslim. And for any other reason, marriage or whatnot, you know, there's many reasons why you may need the Shahada certificate. So Alhamdulillah, you know, she came to the center, she got the certificate um, and she got the material from us. And I wasn't there, another brother was there. And, uh, you know, the brother messaged me afterwards. He said, you know, SubhanAllah, bro, you know, the sister was crying so much. And I was like, SubhanAllah, and he got moved, you know, she, he got inspired as well, Allahu Akbar. Um, so brothers and sisters, I hope this video was beneficial, you know. Um, when they, there are so many people out there who, you know, if you look at again in the beginning, what did she want? She wanted a Quran copy, which is great, which is fantastic, right? But then, you, you know, you take your time to ask these questions, single, simple questions. All right, great. So, you know, do you know anything about Islam? Oh, okay. What religion do you follow? Oh, okay. What do you believe about God? Oh, okay. Jesus? Okay. Muhammad? Okay. Well, what's stopping you to become a Muslim? Boom, 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 boom. Right? Alhamdulillah. Um, and then she said, you know, I said, have you been searching about Islam? How long have you been searching about Islam? This sister itself. And she said, SubhanAllah, this is another thing happened. SubhanAllah, she said, she started searching about Islam since this pandemic happened. The coronavirus pandemic happened. She said, of course, I was at home. I was searching online. I found it. One thing led to another. I started reading. I started watching videos. And she said, you want know this is what this this makes sense. This is what, you know, my heart is saying, yeah, it is. And subhanAllah, you know, I was saying to one of the brothers, I said, you know, this is one of the blessings in disguise of these times of times of challenges and tests. No doubt these times are very, very difficult for many, many people for whatever reason. But there are some goodness that's coming out of these times as well. And this is one of that goodness. You know, she, she said, look, if this pandemic didn't happen, I mean, Allah knows best, of course. But, you know, she couldn't, she, I mean, she didn't say this, but if this pandemic didn't happen, she may not have the time to search, right? And she would have just continued doing what she was doing. So, Alhamdulillah, always believe in the, in, in, in the Qadr of Allah, that every single thing happens by the will of Allah. And it's about trying to find the blessings in these times. And of course, putting that into goodness for us. 
I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he keeps this sister and all of the new Muslims steadfast upon the right right way and all of us in general as well mustaqim. and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide her family and all of the new Muslims families to Islam because as we know there's nothing better than when your family is upon guidance as well Amin Ya Rab Jazakallah Khair make sure you share the video if you like it I'm sure you liked it and make sure you subscribe to the channel Barakallahu fi subhanakallahumma wa hamdik nashhadu la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh